Hey YouTube, Burr Billy here. Today I want to do a review on a meter. The brand name on the meter is a DM IOTech. The model number of this meter is a DM 6268D. A company reached out to me called Excel. I'm going to put a link down below for this meter if you're interested in it after the review. I'm not being paid for this. They sent me a meter to take a look at. I'm always up front with you guys about that kind of stuff so I just wanted you to know how this works. I was sent a meter, take a look at it and they've asked for an unbiased review. So I'm going to cover what you get with the meter. You get your meter, you get the two leads, and I'm going to say right off the bat, these are nice leads. They just feel of good quality when you hold them. It's not something that you hold and you go, oh my goodness, this is junk. This is nice stuff. They come with caps, a red and a black cap for the red and black leads, and again, not a cheap rubber membrane or anything like that. Nice heavy duty uh, plastic caps that go over top, and if you wanted to keep protecting your leads, you'd be able to do that. They seem like they would last a while. It comes with a temperature testing probe. This is because there's a setting on there to check temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit. It has a manual and it comes with a bag. It also comes with a box. This is the box it was shipped in. It's a different looking meter that was on the box cover than I got. The sticker is the right information. It's the DM6268D. Alright, so I'm just going to dive right into this. When I go hands-on on the meter, I'm going to cut away and go to close-ups of what I'm doing so you can see it. When I'm just talking like this, we'll, we'll pan back like I am now. One thing that I like about it, but at either end they put an off. And I like that because on the wheel, if you're all the way at one end, you don't got to crank all the way back. You just crank over to the off. So right there, that lets me know somebody was thinking when they engineered this or set it up. My only complaint about this that I've found so far in playing around with this meter for the last couple weeks, this turn knob, I would like to see them add a bar to it or a knob to it so that you can reach down with your hand and turn it with your fingers this way instead of using a thumb or a finger to dial it. Maybe I'm getting older, but it's just my preference. I actually prefer them that way. This mechanism here, though, is very firm. And again, for a lower cost meter, I'm amazed at the quality fill on this meter. Okay, so let's just dive into it. We're going to start with our first setting. The first setting on the meter is located right here, and that's our volts. To get what we want, when we turn it to volts, there's a little tab on here. When we turn it to volts, it'll come up and there will be a DC above here. So we want to hit select, and that takes us over to AC. Then we can take our two probes, insert them into the outlet, and see voltage. I'll do that now. Okay, so I've got my probes in the outlet over here, and we're reading 119.7 volts. The next setting that you click to is going to be your resistance or your continuity setting. Now, this setting right here is actually for diodes, testing diodes, but... I don't usually work with stuff like that. Again, this is where a technician may use it for this or somebody doing some more electronic troubleshooting. For your typical homeowner, what we're going to use at the test for would be for continuity. And I'm going to show you something here. To get what we want to do, what we want to do is we want to hit the select button and it brings up a little speaker up here at the top and on the screen. And what that's going to allow us to do is when we touch our two probes together, you hear that beep? So what, what that's doing is letting us know that we have continuity between the two probes. We would do this like if we were testing a switch or testing a circuit to see if something was broken in there. This would be a way to like test a switch. If the switch is closed, you get this. When you flip the switch open, it goes silent. You hear it as well as see it. The next setting up is actually for capacitance. We would use this if we were testing like a capacitor on an air conditioning unit or something like that. The next setting up is HZ and then there's like a percentage sign. So the HZ is what we'll worry about because that is for Hertz. Uh, in the U.S., our electrical power is, comes down the line at 60 HZ or 60 Hertz. That means it's alternating back and forth at 60 times a second. So let's plug in. We've got it set up here on this. Let's plug in and see what we get. And as you can see, we're putting in at 60 a second, 60.02. This Hertz stuff, is it's good to know this if you're in your house. You can check because if it was off by a decent percentage, you know, 4 or 5%, you might want to contact the power company and see what's going on. This is more for like guys who are troubleshooting electric motors and stuff. The, the more Hertz changes, that cycle changes, 
it actually has a direct proportional change on, on the electrical motor. So this is a good thing to have. The symbol after that, that percentage symbol, is for duty cycle. That's for like testing things on compared to being off and that's something more for somebody doing something technical would use this. Basic homeowner, I don't see a need for it. The big things you're going to want with your meter are going to be the ability to do amps, the ability to detect voltage, the ability to test voltage in AC and DC, the continuity, checking resistance, checking ohms, checking capacitance. These are all great things for a typical DIY or a homeowner or a contractor doing basic remodeling, construction work, things like that. This is a great meter. All right, so the next setting up is actually going to be for our Celsius and Fahrenheit. And so for that, we would take the test leads out. We would take the two leads from our temperature test probe, plug them in. And now for this test, what I've got, I've got a heater here next to me. I'm going to turn it on. What we're going to do is I'm going to switch this over. It's on the Celsius Fahrenheit. I'm going to hit select. So we're reading our temperature in Fahrenheit. And right now it's showing that it's about 69, 70 degrees here. I'm going to turn the heater on. We're just going to stick the probe up here and see what it does. So we're already climbing as the heater starts to heat up. You guys can see it climbing up, so that's the general idea here. All right, our next setting is going to be for amps. We're just going to go to the 60 amps. The next one up 600. We don't need to test both of them, but I do want to show you how this works and what, how we're reading it. So when you do it amps, that's where this this loop here comes in. There's a button on the side here, or it's part of the clamp here. You can press down on it, it opens it up, and we're going to put that around the wire, and then I'm going to show you a reading with it with no load and then we're going to turn this heater on so you can see it under load with the amps. Now one thing when you're testing amps, you don't want to go around a wire like the electrical wire coming off of an appliance because it's reading the electromagnetic field around the wire itself. The best one to read is your power or your positive side, the black or red wire. That's the one you really want to try and get your amps load off of. If you clamp across both of these, you're not going to get an accurate reading. So you want to try and get to a point where you, you can see that power line either in the outlet, pull it out of the wall, and then clamp on the power line coming off an outlet if you're testing it. Or they actually sell things that will plug into the wall that split the power circuit coming out of the wall. Then you plug your appliance into it, and you can clamp around that, and that will actually give you an accurate reading that way. And it's a safe way of doing it because you're not going into the wall or pulling the wire out or messing around inside the electrical panel. So down here we have our outlet. I'm going to clamp around it. I've selected AC 60 amps, and as you can see, there's really nothing going on here. So now I'm going to turn on the heater. And we've now jumped to a, nine, a 10 amp pull that fast by just turning on the heater. And as it starts to settle in, you'll see the amps drop off a little bit. You typically have a higher amp when anything starts up, a refrigerator, or a motor, uh, a heater like this. When they first start up, you're going to get a high draw and then it'll start to balance out. If you're looking for a meter, you want something to have around the house, be able to, a nice multimeter to do, like I discussed, your voltage, your amps, things like that. Or if you're a technician, an air conditioning guy, guy who works on electric motors, and you're looking for something that isn't going to break the bank, I think this is something that you could take a good look at. I, I am very happy with it. When I first got it, I was very skeptical. I kept an open mind to it, just started messing around with it, see how it was going to function, see what I thought of it. And the more I've used this meter, the more I like it. The fact is, I'm thinking of taking this one in the work because I've got a more expensive meter at work right now that I, I, I think I'd rather use this one. It, it's going to do the, everything I need it to do and nowhere near the cost of one of the higher end ones. I'm going to have a link below that will take you to the page. Excel was asking me to put a link on there, take you guys over if you're interested in buying one of these. They also had mentioned to me they're going to have a promotional on this for a discount. I'll have the link down there until they tell me it's no longer active and then I'll jump on and pull the link. Alright, well as always, I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video.